His Excellency Gerald Atalou, High Commissioner of Canada, Mr. Keith Gilgis, Political Economic Chief at the United States Embassy, Mr. Matt Nottingham, Communication Specialist, British High Commission, the Honorable Nylong Hippolyte, Member of Parliament, Laventil West, Minist members of the Ministry of National Diversity and Social Integration, Mrs. Marva Duncan, our hostess here today at the YMCA, members of the media, executive of Steve Meadows Productions, parents, other esteemed guests and listeners, good afternoon. I have prepared a five-page speech and I have just decided to forego it. In this room today, we are neither PNM, UNC, diplomat, parent. We are the people of Trinidad and Tobago. We are families, we are friends. And it scares me. It really, really scares me. The way that we have looked at our country now as though it's hopeless, as though everything that comes is just the same old. As a performer, I could read the face of my audience. It's one of my jobs as an actor to know when I'm performing well. And on some faces, I see it. This is just another press conference. This is just another set of talk. All these parents that you see sitting there, most of them have just gone to know us just within the last three weeks or four weeks. And each one of them has a story to tell. A story of sometimes broken family life. Sometimes they don't know really what to do again in the situation. Sometimes hopelessness. And I want to ask a question. What would make someone who would know an organization for just three weeks, leave their work, leave their job, leave their time, what would make members of this esteemed panel come out to a destination unknown to most of them because we had to switch in the, in the last minute. Something great is happening here. And in our country, it is almost that something great hasn't happened for such a long time that we forget what it is to believe. We forget what it is to be great. We forget who we are. And it really boggles me when people ask, you know, when we're doing our presentation, what is the, the purpose or what is the reason for crime in the country? And the answer is all of us. All of us have a role to play. From the corporate entity that spends millions of dollars on a FET, but deliberates to give chick feed for programs that change lives. To the police officer who abuses his authority. To the leader who takes forever to make a decision. We've been shopping around for quite a while. And I, I want to say to those people represented, represented on the board here today, on the head table, you could beat your chest with pride. Because you have invested in changing the social fabric of Trinidad and Tobago. The media might be skeptic about that. And they may look at this as just another program. But the lives that have been touched are, is evidence that it's not just another program. We have become too complacent in our compassion in the way that we deal with each other, 
in the way that we even stereotype each other. On my way here, we were stopped. The maxi that I was traveling was stopped by a police officer. And you see maxi was stopped twice. And young, one young man was identified twice to be pulled out. And he had to go through the whole search and everything. And I, I said to myself, something has to be done. We cannot just look at each other and say, this is bad, and this is the face of what is bad. And I've been hearing over the media people calling for, for soldiers to be precepted and for na enforced national service. I've also heard, you know, so many things from so many people. Ladies and gentlemen, our program works. It works. There's testimony to that by the participants, by their parents. Now ask yourself, if we have a program that works, why is it it is not being supported the way that it should? Then there has to be something fundamentally wrong with how we treat things in this country. I sometimes thank God that we have diplomatic missions here. Because sometimes without them, we don't get a chance. And I, I, I'm, it grieves my heart to see that. Because when you look at the equation, we have enough resources to solve this problem. This is not something we could just do isolated and help a few people. This could be replicated throughout the country. And it hurts my heart when I see the country going the way that it is. And I, I sat down here and I have deliberated over that speech and I, I just can't see it. Because at this time, we are not doing our best. Every person in here has a different role to play. And the God honest truth is, whether you're a parent, whether you're a leader, whether you're an NGO, <coughs> whether you're a member of the media, we are not doing our best. It is not good enough to highlight crime. And yet when young people do great things, they are hidden on the back page. That encourages crime. Because they see that as the only way to become famous. And it cannot be that we want to sell sensationalism at the cost of our country. This may never be good on as one of the most diplomatic of speeches. And I understand that. But one of the things that we are respected for by our participants is that we always speak the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. Because as parents, sometimes we don't protect our children enough. We don't do the things that we're supposed to do. And I get it. We bog down with life. We bog down with you know, trying to make a dollar, trying to make ends meet. But at the end of the day, if we were to gain all that and lose our children, then it was all for nothing. That's right. We have removed God from our school system. We have removed God from almost anything that we think imaginable. And how do we expect to thrive without him? This is our country. Every single person here sitting and even the diplomatic or your presence here means that you are citizens and we thank you for your input but this is our country ladies and gentlemen and if we don't unite if we don't stand up and if we don't move forward with the greatness that God has blessed us with we will perish as a nation 
it frightens me when I put on the television and I see the news every night. It frightens me that people think that they have to burn tires and so on just to get notice. That scares me. Our country has too many resources. And politics would have its place. But politics should not determine the standard of life that we live. We are fortunate to live in a country that we could all live great lives. We live in a time that's a creative age. You could be anything that you want to be. There's no such thing as you getting ready for a particular career. Because one, and, and that is one thing that I admire with the persons of our diplomatic corps. Very, very creative. A man can have an idea and make Facebook. That was just one idea. I often wonder if Mark Zuckerberg was born in Trinidad, if Facebook would have ever taken off. We cannot continue like this. We have a responsibility to each other, to our leaders, and our leaders have a responsibility to us to take our country forward. And we are asking for your support, not because we want a handout. We don't have facilities. We don't have many things that we could assist more persons. Every time that we want to enroll students, we have to wait until somebody sponsors a cycle. That should not be. Not for the type of results that we are getting. And as the great Muhammad Ali says, it's not boasting if it's the truth. I have persons on our executive that are from Lavantel. One in particular, I didn't even know that pipes don't run to his house. And there's somebody that worked with me for two years. And to me, that is unacceptable in this day and age. Not in Trinidad and Tobago. Not with all those resources that we have available. I have seen young boys and young girls deprived of a childhood. They don't know what it is to play. Have had horrendous things done to them and suffered at the hands of persons that we should protect them from. But we don't even have the mechanisms to protect them in this country. And so today, I say that when we leave here, we all understand that it cannot be business as usual. Because you're seeing it in the atmosphere. Something has to change. We have to do better. We cannot continue as business as usual. We have to be better parents, better leaders, better stakeholders, better policemen as of today. When we move forward, let us move forward as one country, one people. God bless you, and God bless Trinidad and Tobago.